My name is Dr. Scott Finney, F-I-N-N-I-E, and I teach African American history, and I also teach American history. And uh, I do that to the young people known as Asia University America program from Japan. I teach American history once a week, but my main job is African American history under the auspices of Africana Studies. And I'm also the director of Africana Studies and uh, temporarily the executive director of race and culture studies as well. I grew up in the 60s, so I'm uh, I kind of, on one hand, hey, boomer kind of thing, yeah. But actually, there's some dynamite in this boomer because I grew up right in the middle, in the Bay Area, California, of watching the Black Panthers come to fruition. Uh, my cousin was Huey Newton, one of the co-founders of the Black Panthers. Uh, I had one brother who was in the Haight-Ashbury scene with the hippies idea of, you know, tune in, turn on, and drop out. And then I had one other brother, because I'm the youngest of uh, uh, six boys, he had the idea, it's a matter of protest, and he joined the Berkeley activist scene. So I saw this anti-war, anti-racism, anti-establishment. I saw it in my living room, and I saw it lived out of my brothers. So it planted a seed in me. And now I see a, the conduit as, as higher education. That seed can still be planted into folks decades apart from it. And that's, that's what drives me. In a nutshell, I would say that the Africana Studies program is all inclusive. We have 50 to 60 students come up to our student lounge of all races, all ethnicities, because our, our thought is this. It's the strength of the coalition that can change anything, regardless of waiting on legislation or no legislation, it's the strength of coalition. And so we create a student home environment here, intellectually, academically driven, but at the same time, very much ready to be activists and very much willing to support our students. Cross that finish line, get your degree, and make a difference, regardless of your background, because you are the agent of change. Yeah, our, uh, our numbers have been very encouraging. Over the last three years now, we have over 2,000 students uh, when we put together all three quarters, online and on campus. And uh, that number is ranking with at the top tier of uh, other disciplines across the, the notion here at, at Eastern. We've been here for 50 years, since 1969, actually. 68, if you put it on, on paper. And the thing is, in 68, based on the 66 breakthrough in higher ed about black studies, in this part of the country, there was still that inquisitive, exploratory kind of notion and enough representatives of the, from the black perspective joining with a lot of professors here who of European background, who of so-called Caucasian background, but they were in unison that this black perspective needs to be here to enrich our fuller understanding. So it was a real joint effort, a real joint student driven on one hand, but yet we had a number of professors here who really uh, pioneered with them. So that's the one good thing about Eastern Washington University. There's a broad horizon of offerings, of disciplines, of fields, and in the sense of a holistic kind of approach to producing students that aren't just experts at quantitative things and aren't just experts at reading, but they're experts in a sense, a growing expert, at being able to interact with people. And really, um, our job is to inform about the lo uh, kind of locked up riches of the African-American contribution to the American story, and at the same time, to bring up current events and actually communication styles that can actually enhance uh, the careers after they leave the university. Because Africana Studies is a multidisciplinary kind of field anyway, every class involves some amount of psychology, some amount of sociology for sure. These are almost like the two basic strands. But we also offer courses such as the history of Africa, or uh, early American, African-American history, where we focus on the institution of slavery that existed from 1640 to 1865 in this country. Then we have a more kind of intellectual type of African-American lit and the expansive history in America. We have uh, women's, African-American women's history, um, the African-American family. Uh, so what we're trying to do is bring in the social realities of African Americans as part of the American uh, kind of uh, somewhat melting pot, but really more of a tossed salad. And because of that, we want to show the interconnections and that none of this is isolated. And that even though we're talking about 
an isolated group, apparently. Really, we're talking about one of the main fabrics of this American quilt. Every event going on today, and whatever catches the students, uh, uh, how do you say, their attention outside of their smartphone, anything that catches their attention, can I use that to make it relevant because the umbilical cord that there exists of the historical background to that present thing. And so my thought is to make it relevant and then help them backstep to where the sources of what we see today came from. And then ask them to reach their own conclusions based on now more informed kind of a setting. I think what they're really concerned about is the institutional discrimination, the institutional racism that's out there in the systemic way, that's hard to overturn because that's, for instance, like I mentioned today, just your type of name may win you not to have that interview because your name sounds African or African American. See, that's part of that institutional faceless discrimination. So they're very, very uh, cautious of that and aware of that. And then there's these isolated incidences of issues of using the N-word or racial jokes that they have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Not, not common, but it's enough. That there's enough of a pattern there that you have to actually encourage the students with this one thing. Whatever you're doing now, believe it or not, some people have paid the price that it's better than what it was before. And if you pay the price, which requires a vision, and this is our big thing, if you have a vision, what you're doing is leaving an imprint and leaving a passageway for those behind you to have a lot better situation of equity, a lot better situation of, you know, harmony. So it's, it's a fight, it's a struggle, and this thing called social justice is what ignites us. We're not here just to theoretically talk about things. We're here to talk about how to bring in really Dr. King's vision and really Malcolm X's vision of a wholesome unity of a beloved community where people are celebrated for their differences, not isolated or uh, dehumanized. And I think young people have this resiliency in them. They're able to bounce back, even when they meet up with institutional racism, even when they meet up with specific cases of racism, they still have that, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna brush myself off and keep going. And so we as the older generation just wanna stoke that fire, fan into flame, because it's already in them. It, we're actually dealing with the core constituency of, of, of kind of a thirst for social justice that's already inborn in them. Part of our uh, drive and aspiration is how to show the interweaving of all aspects of American history that have uh, African-American or black perspective that illuminates what happened there. It's not, it doesn't exclude uh, other points of view, other perspectives. But what it does is it illuminates and it opens up inquiry. Because if we can get our students to be students of inquiry, seeking to make informed conclusions, not conclusions based off a, a cable news channel's uh, latest headline, but mainly they're researching and thinking. And so what happens is the more students we have, the more we show long-term wise the value of it outside of February in the way of look at the truth, look at the facts, and look at the outcome of a certain situation with interpretive skills. And what the African-American perspective does is kind of enriches one's interpretive skills that can be applied in a multiple way. And so I think year round, as we've come to a major now, we now have a major in Africana studies, that is gaining some authenticity and legitimacy. Uh, it's married with interdisciplinary studies right now until we can be a standalone. But the thought is, just by becoming a major, we now are in the league of the big boys. You know, we're in the major leagues now. And so we're growing that sort of thing. Eventually, my thought is, why not have a master's availability in Africana studies? So we want to keep pushing the foundation of legitimacy. And unfortunately, uh, this has been an uphill struggle, a struggle, but it is not something we're surprised by. And we find that young people are so much more enthusiastic and responsive to it than the older generation and the more conventional generations that exist. So our, we, we see the future is very bright. You know, I had a vision that it seems best if we can take students outside of the school environment, outside of the classroom environment, and have them become eyewitnesses of the rich treasures of heritage that we have in the South based on the civil rights struggle. 
it would leave an impression and an imprint far beyond any classroom setting. So last year, we took 15 students, myself and another professor and our program director, and we went to Atlanta, and then we went down to Montgomery, up to Selma, over to New Orleans, up to Jackson, Mississippi, over to Memphis, and then down to Birmingham, and then back to Atlanta in seven days during spring break. And we visited every crucial key civil rights spot, and we met with civil rights folks who actually gave us some live narration of what it was like back then. The museums, the Lynching Museum, for instance, in Montgomery, the impression of what it left on people was astounding, to see students stepping back and reflecting, and then needing to, to debrief and to cry and pick up their phone and tell their mother and father what they were experiencing. It was, and then to hear their parents started crying, to, just to see what kind of impression going to those sites can do. So it, it is something now that we uh, are gonna do again this year, and we uh, hope to do it every year. Uh, and we have about 35 students that are gonna go this time. And instead of three different minivans, we're gonna have a chartered bus and go to 23 different locations in seven days. And, and, and now there's a buzz across the campus about it because every group that goes, part of the class, of course, it's a five credit class upper division, but part of the class obligation is come back and report to the campus. And so we have a series of uh, events planned after this one, like we did last year, where students will say and testify, this is what I thought about it before I got into it. This is what I experienced there. And now that I look back, as one person said, I wanted to be a physics uh, expert, but now I want to be an activist physic, physics expert. So you could see it kind of has a kind of uh, impact that you can't teach in a classroom setting. And we, we just uh, like to uplift our students here, and we think uh, Africana Studies is a great uh, umbrella for that.